Hey everybody, this is Robbie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made the uh, cover for Game of Thrones theme. Uh, if you have not heard it, go ahead and check the description. I will leave a link uh, there to the actual track. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about producing or recording music with the electric violin, uh, even the regular violin, be sure to hit the subscribe button. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the intro, let's just give that a quick listen. Alright, very simple intro. There's quite a lot of reverb and delay that I use. And to really tell the difference, let's first just listen to the original without any effects on. Um, and for this track I actually let me just double check here I was sending it to another channel uh, where all I did was I put a reverb on it so let's just turn that off for now and let's just hear what actually came out of the electric violin see what happens when I do add in that reverb you can already hear the difference. All right, uh, next thing I did to make it sound fuller, uh, I duplicated it. So you can see uh, these two tracks, they're exactly the same, but I moved one a little bit behind just to give it a, a more of a chorus effect. Because imagine like two violin players playing together, they're not gonna sound exactly the same or play at exactly the same. Uh, you know, millisecond. And what I did next was I moved this a little bit to the left and I moved the second one a little bit to the right. And so this gives it a cool effect of making it sound more, uh, more wide. I also adjusted the volume as well. Uh, next thing I did was I equalized it. So I basically took out all the bass frequencies because there's really not much in terms of bass going on here. Uh, however, you'll notice in this uh, channel, I focused on a little bit different. So this is, think of like two different violins. They're not going to sound exactly the same. They're going to have different uh, timbers, I guess. Um, so this is one kind of quick way to artificially create different timbers between two audio files that are actually exactly the same. Now you, you'll see I also added another reverb. I guess at the end of it, when I started adding everything together, I felt like this reverb alone was not enough. Uh, so I just added a little bit more. So now when we give it a listen, it sounds a lot fuller than that original sound that was just coming out of the um, electric violin. Next, we're gonna be talking about the cello melody, the famous solo uh, that everybody knows from Game of Thrones. So let's give it a listen, it's right here. Now again, I didn't really do too much to this track except send it to, um, I also send it to that reverb. So again, let's give it a listen without anything on it. And what I do need to do is unfreeze this track. Now I'm playing a Gewa Novita five string electric violin and I absolutely love the, um, the lowest string, the C string on this instrument. You can hear that uh, the tone, the timber itself is already, it, it sounds like a cello. It's just crazy to play like this cello sound out of a violin. Um, so I absolutely love it. So now let's take a look what I did to this sound. Um, let's add that reverb back. Again, reverb does so much. So that's already sounding good there. Uh, next thing I use is an exciter. Uh, I use ozone, but again, you can use like every software probably comes with exciter. You can probably find it online uh, for free. Um, but it just adds a little bit of extra texture to it. So, so one more time without it. 
And then with. You can kind of hear the highs just a little bit more clear. And the last thing I did here was just some equalizing, so I got rid of a lot of the muddiness down there. Even though there wasn't, but I just want to make sure not too many frequencies are fighting around. So. Uh, now, another thing I did here, you'll notice the melody actually repeats itself. So this one just got a lot softer. And you also notice in the equalization, uh, I took out, I basically toned down a lot of the high frequencies. Uh, again, this is what the first time sounded like. And now, same thing, but it sounds very distant. Uh, and I did that on purpose because we actually go an octave higher. And I did not want the original melody fighting um, with this new uh, new octave. So if we give it a listen. So we don't really hear like a dip in volume, especially with this new octave coming in. Uh, even though this one, uh, it went way softer. Uh, but that's something we really have to be careful with in production because um, every time we introduce something new, that new audio uh, is going to fight with the original. All right, there's only so many frequencies we can play with. There's only so much space uh, that, that is available to us and that the speakers can actually play. So, and a lot of times in this kind of production, it's more about what can we take away to make sure we're not fighting with uh, the new sound that we kind of want our audience to focus on. Now let's take a look at the drums. So everything here was done on the electric violin except the drums for obvious reasons. Let's go ahead and listen once like the, the main theme comes in. So I get all my drum sounds from splice.com. Uh, it's right here, it's $8 a month, um, and it's just got this insane library of all kinds of sounds you can download. Uh, it's easy to download, and they actually work really well with Ableton as well, which is reason number 50 why I love to use Ableton. But let's go ahead and listen to some of these drum sounds that came from Splice. Like it honestly, if you play it by itself, it does not sound like something um, that should be in Game of Thrones theme. Here's just a lot of, I basically just took that timpani sound and just repeated it several times. But yeah, definitely check out Splice. I highly recommend that website if you're looking for sounds that you can add to, to your electric violin. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the bass. So let's give it a listen. You can see here I did quite a lot with it um, to get that sound. Let me first unfreeze that track. And again, let's hear it with without any of this stuff. And let's see if there's and if I'm sending it anywhere. Okay. So I am sending it to the um, reverb as well. So now let's give it a listen. Okay, now what I did with this was um, 
I actually transposed it down by uh, 12, so an octave. If we listen to the original, like what came out electric violin, you, you can't really reach this low without like the strings just collapsing. Um, I, I had to do it in here, but it kind of gave it an effect that I really like, this kind of deeper tone. It uh, doesn't really sound too much like a violin. Sounds like more of something you get out of like a bass guitar. Now, uh, what I did here was I added uh, compression um, just, just off of one of the presets in Ableton. Just to bring up like the volume and attack just a little bit. Then there was this kind of bass amp. Uh, which made it sound more boomy. And let's see what this is. This is a, I think, also an exciter. Uh, just to add a little bit more of those higher uh, frequencies. Let's add that reverb back. Okay. And, um... And the last thing I did was just to equalize it. Now you might be wondering, like, why do I... It, it seems counterintuitive. I'm adding exciters, I'm adding bass, and at the very end, then I'm taking it all away. Um, what I like to do is when I'm working with the sound by itself, I try to get the sound to what I want it to sound like. But obviously, when I start playing it with everything else, or if it's like just fighting with other instruments, that's when I really start... Uh, getting more uh, careful with the, with the frequency. So I start using this EQ here. Now the bass really does add a lot, even though it sounds simple, kind of simple on its own. But if you listen to the original, and there's just this really low and powerful tone um, in the original track. So if we listen to it without it, like it feels like half the track is missing. Uh, but if we add it back, It really is not something you have to hear super clearly. It's really something that you feel. It's like this rumble that you feel. And so that's what we have here. With everything going on, we might not really notice it, but without it, it's noticeable. And that's, that's what we want. That's where we want our bass to be. Now let's take a look at the violins. So let's take a look at some of these. Now, during this part of the um, of the song, there's this really lush kind of pad that comes in, and that, that's the violins. And this one was actually a little bit hard to achieve. And I'll show you what, what it sounds like without that pad. So here's everything else. We're missing the rhythm, right? And so that's this right here. Now the problem with this is this sounds a lot like the beginning too. So how do we kind of add to it so it feels a little bit different? Very similar to the intro, duplicated it, created another audio, uh, created another track here, and what I did differently with this one, um, I made the EQ a little bit different just to give it a slightly different uh, timber. Uh, made it very wide. So this one is pretty far left. This one's pretty far right because we're creating a wider space with this um, with this 
pad here basically and I also added a little bit more of a exciter on the second one and let's see what else I did interestingly I did not send these two to the reverb as much I don't know why <laughs> I kind of forgot why I did that uh, I only sent it to reverb a little bit maybe I felt it was just a little bit too much again when compared when added to everything else it was just getting a little too much but I just wanted a certain like texture presence there so again if we listen to it by itself without all the uh, bells and whistles we get and we can listen to it with the other tracks too like see how much is missing when it's just by itself It almost feels like this violin player isn't even in the same room. It's like you got this lush thing going on and then you got this violin player that's playing inside the bathroom or something. But it just doesn't sound like it's even coming from the same space. So that's what we had to do here. We had to add to the space. And so once we EQ'd it, uh, we basically defined the space so it doesn't fight too much with the other instruments. And we added a cathedral just to blend it in a little better as well, the cathedral reverb. Um, and one thing that reverb does is it also pushes your sound a little bit to the back. Like anything with reverb is going to kind of sound like sound distant. All right. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Like reverb makes things sound really cool. and But don't go reverb happy because... Reverb is also what's used to make instruments sound distant as well. And so that's what we want to do here. We didn't want it so sitting up front. We want to push it just a little bit further back without lowering the volume. And so what we did was we added uh, reverb to the sound itself, duplicated it to give it that stereo spread. And so now if we listen to it... So it sits a little bit better with all the other um, the other instruments. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about producing music with the electric violin, be sure to hit the subscribe button.